So this gives us a clearer understanding of how the moving load of the vehicle impacts the bridge structure and the resultant forces it produces. Of course, this is a process that we would also have to follow for the remaining lanes. But for now, we can use this first result as a clear reference of what we can expect. Additionally, we can also save this animation for further analysis and comparison. As we can observe, due to the moving load of this 8-axle vehicle, we are obtaining displacements of up to 4.8 units, which is beyond the limits defined by our code. Therefore, we can conclude that our current design is inadequate for bearing the loads that we are now required. This, of course, implies that we should then reconsider this design. In other words, and as we observed in the previous exercise, carry out a process through which by multiple tests, we achieve a design that meets our requirements. Moreover, in addition to the issue we have just addressed, Another adjustment that we should consider is increasing the height of the bridge, as it should be capable of accommodating larger vehicles. So let's go ahead and, using this model as a reference, develop a new design for our bridge. To begin, let's request a new structural template. And, opening a small parenthesis, let's remember that this concrete element should be fastened to the steel structure using Nelson bolts. Since this will enable true collaboration between concrete and steel, with the concrete working in compression and the steel in tension. But let's carry on with our design and next pay attention to the configuration of this new project. Again, our aim here is to create a first design proposal that we will subsequently test against various load cases and resultant forces, allowing us to make adjustments to the design as needed. So let's go to work and begin with the placement of the first set of beams corresponding to the structure of our bridge. First, Let's select both the work plane and the axis in which we will operate, or in this case, the XZ plane, aligned to the structure axis number one. Then with this established, let's continue and pull up the beam dialog. Well, as a first instance, we are receiving a warning message indicating that the lateral buckling analysis for the member number 16 isn't being performed. Now, there might be multiple reasons for this from a section that doesn't provide sufficient information to the program, to a member whose resultant buckling can be considered negligible. Then let's carry on and take a closer look at the results of this verification. As we can observe, we are getting an efficiency ratio close to zero, which implies that our structure is most likely over-engineered. Therefore, we can venture that a more slender section may be a better choice. Then let's go ahead and carry out the necessary steps. Let's begin, of course, and with the help of the section's database panel, by determining the size of the section that we want to test. Let's try, for example, a W section of 8 by 10, which features a weight of 14 kilograms per meter, and use the section's dialog to define it inside our project.